Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning from the game that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's quickly start off with the game and see how it goes, which pieces we get. Got the white pieces, so I'll play the London system setup, which starts with d4. Bishop on f4, play pawn to e3. Uh, he plays knight first, which is okay. I can also develop my knight. If bishop here, then we can bring back our bishop. But rather he chooses to play the knight. So we'll play a solid pawn structure, develop the bishop on d3. He's trying to close the diagonal. We can just play queen c2 here with the idea of taking the knight and he loses a pawn after we take with the queen. So for that, he has to play f4, f5 there, which is always weakening, as we see. A um, couple of ideas here. One can be to plant the bishop here. Let's go with the knight for now, maybe. Bishop actually stops him from getting his... Uh, Bishop developed because he lost the pawn there, so he cannot move the bishop unless he takes with the knight. I as well take, but then it comes with a fork as well in the next move. So yes, now opponent's confused, and we can just try and take advantage of that and continue developing our pieces. We can play even c4 sometime. F8 takes. That's gonna be helpful. Okay. So he gives away the knight there for the bishop. We are planning to go here. So he defends with the queen. Probably now opponent is looking to castle and I don't want his plans to succeed. So I'll just take this on so that his castling is spoiled. Okay. One idea is to give a check, but he blocks with the pawn, so it doesn't work. Can I now take on the knight? Ah, no, let's not take, but rather go here. With the idea of planting the knight on e5. That's also a stronger square. Which you see is coming, so that saves with the bishop. Um, I can definitely play pawn forward here. Ask him to take. If he wants to, he doesn't. I'll take here. Shall I, shall I just proceed? Sometimes opening files can be problematic too. Let's see what happens. Oh, he opens up the E file instead because my king is in the center. That's also a decent strategy, I would say. Okay, what have we got here? Queen is one inactive piece right now. We can take on this, but then he closes the pawn and that creates some weakness again. Uh, let's play first pawn to a3 here, preventing bishop here. Okay, the opponent has started moving his pawns towards our side. Of course, I can take here. We can castle as well anytime we want to on the queen side, so that's not an issue. Um, probably we should just castle right now because there can be some threats at the end. Let's sidestep the king. Queen and king should never be in the same squares there. Okay, let's take. Let's go on with the knight. Even okay, losing a pawn there. But I have to exchange stuff. I have to save my knight as well. Maybe could have got here, but then I lose the pawn on f2. So some troubles will always be there. This is fine. I can play pawn forward. And now if rook comes to h2, most probably I can take on the knight. Okay. Let's take on this knight first. Knights can be deadly. Don't want any cheap tactics to happen at the end. Okay, queen here with the idea of taking in this pawn sometime with my rook in the next move. Let's save the pawn first. Doesn't help much. 
um king up just trying to make sure the king is safe now it is the sidestep so it doesn't see that i'm going to take the pawn can be missed by the opponent uh, he saves it's playing pretty fast and pretty nice as well okay let's try and go with the queen somewhere trying to give a check maybe grab a pawn eventually I have to find a way out it's asking for queen exchange now again i would say nice move because he spawned up but is that enough of a compensation can be sometimes let's not take a risk don't want to exchange stuff when you are lagging behind in the game okay let's give a check we just discover attack on the king now so i have to be careful with that uh, but i can go back so not an issue i can come here yep that's what happens um let's slip on forward i somehow feel it's better his rook is hanging just in case okay he saves can i attack his queen here i can probably where does he go here yep okay, i come back or i should first take on the pawn uh let's take the pawn first he got stakes i just make space for my king takes a pawn i go here this rook is hanging right now let's see if he saves yes he does and nicely too okay what are we going to do about it King has to run over here. So we need to block that check. I can go here. I'm threatening mate in one. If opponent leaves a check somehow and is not able to mate me. I, I should have taken the queen. And now I can take the queen. He missed it too. Simple. You miss the queen. You should not miss queens. And that's not being saved now as well. Okay, I will go here. Because I'm threatening mate, he cannot do much. That's mate in one. And he leaves the game. Phew, that was that was a blunder and Yes, he has left, so let's claim it because that was not being saved. Ah, lucky me. Yes, he can just play this, but after I go here, he has to just get rook in between and get made up. So that was over. Let's analyze the game where we did a blunder. Maybe I think that was the only blunder when I played my rook, but he didn't see that coming too. So d4, d5. Bishop f4, e6, e3, standard moves in the London system, creating pyramid in the center, uh, going with knight to f3, opponent plays both the knights first out on f6 and f on c3 respectively, c6, uh, and I play uh, c3 here, strong pyramid in the center as always, and then uh, the important point again as always, uh, taking the dark square bishop out of the pyramid first and then creating it. And then light square bishop comes on d3. I'm the king side. If the opponent castles, he tries to block that straight away. I go with queen to c2 first. He brings in f5. And the best move was to go with the knight or develop the other knight. I went with bishop with the idea he of okay. So computer says he can challenge my bishop, but why can't I take this pawn? Some threats. Rook comes here and gets active. After I take, he cannot take. What's the best move? Queen to f6 is weird, I would say, rather opponent will generally go for this. After this, what is the harm? I can just bring my rook here to save the, the f2. 
and open cannot take on this as well so what's the next move probably now open can consider playing queen here in this case attacking my bishop so i have to come back get a first take i take back position looks okay to me despite computer saying that 0.5 in favor of black there 0.9 now but it looks decent enough because after i just held up my knight i can quickly castle on the queen side and that much time even the opponent will take to castle so that that's good enough of compensation i would say yes i've got double pawns uh h2 is weak um, because i can't move my knight uh, but i can definitely take on this and then proceed with uh, the e5 uh, so that should be okay not that bad too but let, let's go back in the game where uh, the opponent took on the bishop i took back with the knight and then he brings queen to f6 and I took on the bishop there first, uh, trying to spoil his castling, but computer suggesting that take the knight so that if now the opponent takes, oh, then you can probably break the pawn chain as well. Hmm, that's a nice idea. I can implement that next time. If bishop here, you have to safeguard your king from this. How is castling bad? Probably not either on the queen side because. Uh, C5 is not completely open yet. In fact, not even semi-open, which which might get to happen over here by doing this. But then that comes with a knight, and two knights in the center will be devastating for the opponent. Somehow or the other, we'll just keep pushing the queen back. Queen becomes inactive. You can take control of the center further by pushing the pawns forward. F takes. Of course, you have the rook lined up. The other rook is coming into the picture quickly. So the opponent is not going to go much uh, further anyway. I can just say I will probably not probably save my uh, rook there rather than going for the attack. But that's pretty much okay. 2.4 in the middle game when you are in. So that's pretty much good compensation. Of course, the queen is also pretty useless there sitting on h7. So position wise, we are pretty good. So this could have been one line. But I went for for taking the bishop, trying to spoil his casting first, and then I went with my knight on f3. I was confused between playing c4 straight away or going with knight to f3. I chose knight f3 because I was planning to go to e5, which is a controlling square in the London system setup. Here again, I can castle, uh, but I went with c4 first. And opponent responds with c6. I take on the pawn here. Okay, taking was bad because after he takes, I should castle now on the king side because of course. This is semi-open file, c file, but I still first played a3, preventing bishop from coming on b4. Um, that could have given a check otherwise, so playing that. Opponent tries to some uh, do some attack on the king side. I go with h3 first. He plays uh, h5 there. I cast on the queen side now, uh, on the long side. Uh, he's just trying to move the king away. So do I. <coughs> Excuse me. And then he brings the, he plays g4 there. I took on the pawn, he takes, I take the rook. He takes back, I go ahead with the knight. Okay, I should have come back, is what computer is saying. What I was wondering was, this is bad, because of course he gets a pawn plus then the exchange. Uh, like exchange wise, he gets an extra pawn basically. And yes, this is being attacked, which can be saved as well. So by rook to h5 too. So pretty much okay for our opponent here and opponent's winning actually, I would say two is good enough at this point of time. So that's why I wanted to go ahead with the knight. I took it, uh, he takes back. Uh, I thought of taking the knight first, but I, then I played a g3, which, which was more solid. Uh, the idea was if rook comes down to h2, I can still defend with either the rook or I can simply take on the knight as well. So both the options were available. I can take the knight with the bishop. That's completely fine. Uh, we can exchange some stuff, exchange the queen as well. Uh, but yeah, that would be bad because I was pawned down. And if you see, he's got two major center pawns there, uh, C and D file. And they'll be pretty strong with the king as well, advanced rook on my side. And this rook will have to probably babysit my F pawn for a longer time. Meanwhile, he gets to have a good counterplay in the center. So that could have gone wrong. So that's why uh, I just try to play pawn to g3 first. And then he goes back. I take on the knight. He takes with the pawn, trying to make sure that queens are not exchanged. 
is still on the board. I go with queen to uh, b3 with the idea of going rook c1 and then taking on the pawn because the queen is spinning the king there, the pawn there, sorry, uh, because of the king. So I tried to do rook lift first, trying to save my pawn as well. And then when opponent played a6, I could have yeah, directly went for gone for c rook to c2, but I first took my king on a2, a more secure square, I would say. And then rook on, comes on c2, the opponent goes down on the corner. I play queen to b4, trying to get some check from somewhere. He tries to exchange queen. I deny that this time. Then he goes back to the white squares, giving me a chance to give a check. He goes back. I get my queen to be planted on b6. Uh, and that's pretty much nice. He, he get, tries to be cheeky there by playing pawn forward. What was the right move? To take the king backwards. Uh, but I was thinking, if what if he plays the pawn forward? Ah, uh, he cannot play because I can take on the rook. Yep, he cannot play forward. Okay, so this was nice. I could have done this, but instead I chose to move pawn forward, which is still okay. I can take on the pawn here, but I try to attack with the rook. And he goes there. And then I took on the pawn, which was bad. After taking it, I realized that, okay, my rook is now pinned. Uh, and but not for long because after i move he takes on the pawn i have to move the king here my rook is still pinned he gets the rook there i'm pretty much com i'm completely losing here it's 5.3 because rook is pinned i if i as soon as i move the rook anywhere my queen is going i i still move the rook and he comes with a check it's made in two from here i go there he just has to give me a check or maybe even take my queen to simplify. If you don't see mates, you can always simplify the position. This will also end up being a checkmate in move, four moves. That's not bad at all. He was way ahead on time, but he probably didn't see. He thought my queen is guarded with something. So he doesn't take my queen and gives me a check from b4 instead. That was strange because that lose the queen. I was always eyeing that and I do that. He can play pawn forward and take at least no even the pawn power doesn't do anything but i can take so there's no compensation happening from there on oh it was made in one i didn't see i rather went there and then saved my king because he cannot do anything about it and that was checkmate as we saw in the game so yeah pretty much uh nice i like the the way we proceeded eventually so hang in there do not quit you you might be blundering a piece but the opponent also has to see it so do not, do not resign until uh, the very last moment. Even if my queen would have gone there, I wouldn't have resigned. You can play for a stalemate always. So try to hang in there as long as possible. Uh, just in case you lose a piece and or down, down on time or anything. Just try to hang in there. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Do like it on YouTube as well. Do subscribe to my channel to stay tuned to all the latest videos that are being uh, undergoing some process right now. I'll just post one video daily as I committed from beginning, uh, just two more days and it will be 100 days of chess yard. Uh, feeling pretty happy about it. Um, thanks for all the support that I've been able to do that. So keep coming back to the channel, liking the videos, commenting on them. Let me know if you want me to cover some trap or some opening that you are interested in. I'll probably study and get back on it try to be instructive as much as possible that helps you improve so that's the whole purpose thank you so much for your time take care bye bye